So I've been using an iPhone for about 10 years, and in the back of my mind, I always knew I was giving up some level of privacy. So the only experience I had back then was with something called Cyanogen Mod, which is now Lineage OS. And back then, the alternate phone OSs had some issues. Sometimes you'd have it where the cell phone signal wouldn't work, you could miss calls or text messages. And this is when I was fresh out of college and I could not afford to miss a call or text from a potential employer. So also back in those days, updates were not that reliable. So if you had a new version of Android come out for CyanogenMod, Mod, you'd do the upgrade, phone would get bricked, and you just couldn't use it. Fast forward eight to 10 years, we now have some pretty reliable alternate phone operating systems that you can install on your Android. They've also done a great job with the updates, never had any issues so far in the time I've been using them. So for this video, I've been using Calyx OS on my Pixel 5 for around the past three to four weeks. I wanted to give it a solid time to give it a good review. And just a quick disclaimer, I am a fan of Graphene OS, but I will do my best to keep this review impartial and offer comparisons where they are valuable. So for a majority of the time I've been using Calyx OS, it's been on Android 11, but literally two days before I started filming this video, I got a notification for an update that was available. I checked the change log and it was for Android 12. So I decided to install it, go with Android 12, and so far it's been good. I know a lot of people are hating on Android 12 because of the big letters and icons and the changes. Personally, I like it, but that's all personal preference. So before I actually get into my impression and review of Calyx OS, I'm going to give some background on why you might want to use a custom OS. If you want to skip that, I'll leave that in the timestamps down below so you can fast forward and get to the actual review part. So if you're new to this, you might be wondering why would I want to use a custom OS when my phone comes with an operating system already installed? So when you buy a phone from Google or Apple, they're really making money off your habits. They don't really make much money off the hardware. Maybe Apple does a little bit because their stuff is expensive but really they're making money from mining your habits. You know, there's Google Pay, there's Apple Pay, they make money from selling that data, your spending habits, the health tracker. Yes, the data is anonymized, but a lot of these companies will buy that anonymized data and use it. The other benefit for these companies is they get you into their walled garden. So with Apple, you get an iPhone, now you have iCloud, iCloud Photos, you start using iMessage, you like it, so you get a Mac so you can use iMessage on your computer, Mac Mini, you know, all the products you start buying, but then you're locked in. So once they get you in there, they get you trapped. They don't put you first. They kind of manipulate you however they want until you reach a point where it's too much and you decide to leave. And when you do decide to leave, that brings us to what some of the other options are. And Calyx OS is one of those. So according to the Calyx OS website, privacy by design is one of their guiding principles. That's something you will not hear from Apple or Google anymore. They start with good defaults. They put privacy first when selecting those settings. So you don't need to go digging or make all these customizations after you install the OS. They also say that any development choices they make put privacy first as well. They use end-to-end -end security when possible. They don't put your data in Google Cloud and they do not constantly report your data to Google. So now with the background out of the way, let's get into my first impressions of Calyx OS. So the first thing you'll see in the initial setup is the option to enable micro G on your phone. And that's the open source compatibility layer that gets Google services running on your phone without actually having the closed source Google services on your phone. As you can see from the screenshot that I took on my device, there is a note at the bottom. If you enable this now, your phone will be set up to send data to Google you can change this setting later in Micro-G settings. So it's important to note that even though Micro-G is this open source compatibility layer and your phone is de-Googled technically, you still will be sending data to Google in this manner just to get things to work. Also in the initial setup, you have a screen that lets you install some additional apps. That's something that I think makes it very user friendly since these can all come bundled with it. And they're all pretty privacy respecting apps on the list. So for me personally, I only install a couple things, which is the Aurora Store and DabX5, but there's some other great apps on the list. Another ROM like Graphene OS doesn't have this option at all. There's nothing else bundled. It's just the bare bones, which I actually like. But I think this is what makes Calyx OS a lot more approachable for other users. So after the initial setup, you're brought to the home screen. And in my previous video where I talked about Graphene OS, I mentioned how it felt very bare and kind of intimidating. But when you get to the Calyx OS home screen, it kind of looks like one of those default Android phones you get from a carrier. It looks welcoming, looks friendly. Yeah, this will work. You know, it's not too bare looking. It looks, it looks familiar if I had to put a word to it. And we can see here in the three screenshots, you know, the Pixel has a bunch of bundled stuff, especially Google embedded in there. Calyx OS has a couple extra apps and Graphene OS is just bare bones. So Calyx OS kind of feels like a furnished apartment. You know, it's not really yours. It's comfortable. It's good enough to sleep in as compared to Graphene OS, which felt like walking into an empty room and not really knowing what to do next. So if you have been hesitant to switch and get rid of your stock Android or switch from an iPhone, I think Calyx OS is that great middle ground for you. So some features about it. There is no account required when you sign in with the phone. You know, if you ever use the Pixel or another Android device, they always ask you to sign in with Google. Calyx OS does not do that. It's also worth noting that as compared to Graphene OS, Calyx OS supports a few additional devices. So if you do have an older phone, then Calyx OS might be for you. So as I mentioned earlier, Micro-G is bundled by default in Calyx OS. I think that's one of the biggest benefits to using Calyx OS. 
That's the compatibility layer that gets everything functioning as you would expect on an Android phone. I'll be honest though, I haven't done a ton of research on Micro-G, so I'm not totally comfortable using it. I don't fully understand the way they do signature spoofing and some other things in the background. I did enable Micro-G on my phone for this review just because I wanted to get the full experience of Calyx OS, and in the future I do plan to do a multi-part series on Micro-G in depth. So the default browser on Calyx OS is Chromium. If you've never heard of it before, it's the open source project that Google Chrome is based off of. It's a solid browser, and if I ever need a Chrome-based browser, I use Chromium. The default camera that comes with the phone is OK. But since you have Micro-G, you can install a Google camera from the Aurora store. The only issue I've encountered is that I get this warning after trying to click the preview after taking a photo. It says that photos is required. You just need to do the extra step of just going to the gallery app and you can see the photo you took. The default search engine is DuckDuckGo. That's what I use. Yes, I know it's a US-based company. There's alternates you can use, but it works well and it's a good alternate and I like the interface. The other feature I like is this banner warning when you make a phone call using your regular cell phone signal. The location and audio of this call are not private. I know some people don't like that big yellow banner up there, but it's a nice reminder that you are not using a secure communication method. Calyx OS also comes bundled with Datura Firewall. It's important to note that this is not an intent-based blocking firewall, which means an app that is restricted Restricted, can offload its networking request to another app that is not restricted, thus bypassing the firewall. Therefore, if you do use the firewall, I would not completely trust the blocking capabilities of it, especially if you're using it for a sketchy app. So I don't have much to say about the battery life. I found that with the Pixel 5, I think the battery is undersized for what the hardware is in the phone. And also I like to use signal video calls a lot and that drains the battery like it's its day job. So since I installed Micro-G when I initially set up Calyx OS, that means all notifications worked on my phone. And since you came here for my opinion, here's my rant on notifications. So when I was using Graphene OS, I didn't install the Sandbox Google Play services. So that means most notifications did not work for my apps. Me personally and other people spend way too much time on their phone. And I really liked when the notifications didn't work because I feel like too many times me myself just speaking from experience I'm attached to seeing the phone screen light up notification going off a ding a bell all that kind of stuff it was nice when it just didn't work so yes I know I could turn off the notifications in Calyx OS but I also know my personality type and I would just go in there and turn them back on so with Graphene OS they just didn't work so I was able to kind of distance myself from my phone usage which was really nice most people would say this is a downside to it I personally saw it as a perk I also realize the irony of making YouTube videos that 33% of you are watching on your phone, but that's a different story. So the other huge topic most people don't talk about is a verified boot. And this is critical to the integrity and security of your device. Calyx OS does support it. Some other OSs do not support it. Verified boot ensures the integrity of the base system and prevents persistent tampering from an attacker. So as an example, let's say an attacker exploited your phone and got root. After a reboot, verified boot will wipe out any persistence the attacker has as it does not permit any alterations to the base system after a reboot. So long story short, do not use a phone OS that does not support verified boot. So with all that being said, Calyx OS is just not for me. I was using Graphene OS for months before that, and when I switched, I just didn't like it. When I started using it, I had this kind of uncomfortable feeling. Maybe it's because I don't understand Micro-G totally, but it's like that time when you're washing your hands in a long sleeve shirt and the sleeves just start to get wet. It's kind of just uncomfortable. So don't get me wrong, Micro-G is great, Calyx OS is great, and they definitely have their spot in the market. Just for me, I want the privacy and security of Graphene OS more than I want the compatibility of Calyx OS. So if I had to sum it up, I would say that Calyx OS is for those who want better privacy, but their top priority is compatibility, and they're not overly concerned with the security. And let's just say if I was trying to get my parents to get away from their iPhones, I would give them Calyx OS so I didn't need to be tech support 24 seven.